here we are again with the to do app and uh, so far our to do app looks like this and it has uh, you know to do items on the list and we can add a new to do item right and uh, and there's our new to do item appears on the list right and you know we can we can delete to do items and uh, you know we got some custom colors here for the style of the thing and what I'd like to do now is um, I'd like to add a little check mark and if you'll recall our app has uh, this to do item class and that represents to do items that are in that are kept track of in the in the array and they display the name and the note and they also have this completed property so completed tells us whether a to-do item is, is complete or not. So if we're done with a to-do item, we can mark it as complete. And if it's not done, then we'll know that it's not done because it's, it's not completed, right? Um, so as it is now, all the to-do items we have are not complete when we add them. <clears throat> and, uh, and there's no way to change their completed property. And there's nothing in the program that shows the state of the completed property. So we're going to add that right now. So what I'd like to do is um, I'd like to use the cell accessory. Okay, so let's look at storyboard. And when I click on a table view cell, if I open up the sidebar here, um, you'll see there's a little property here called accessory, right? And if I choose, you know, check mark from the list, you'll see that a little check mark appears, right? So what we want to do is we want to set this programmatically. So when we pull up a to-do item and we display it in a row in our table view, we'd like to show or hide the accessory, the checkmark accessory, based on the completed property of the to-do item for that row, okay? So every row will be associated with a to-do item and that to-do item has a completed property. And the idea here is, you know, if you tap a row, it'll swap the or switch the completed property from true to false or false to true. You know, so you can tap, it'll be completed. Tap, it's not completed. Okay. Um, so let, let's let's do that. So to uh, to set the uh, the um, accessory view. What we're going to do is we're going to need to um, to handle um, taps on table cells, okay? And remember, our uh, view controller is a UI table view delegate. So that means that the table view doesn't handle these tap actions on its own. Instead, what it does is it sends the event on to its delegate, and the delegate handles it. Okay, so, and that's good for us because TableView doesn't know what's going on in our app. It just wants to tell us what's going on in TableView, and then the app can decide how to deal with that. So, you know, we're a TableView delegate, so we're going to get messages from TableView. So what we're going to get, the message that we're going to get is going to be TableView, and it's... Um, it's did select row at index path. And you'll notice there's one here called did deselect row. Let's not choose that one because that's not going to work for us, right? We're going to choose did select row at index path right here. Did select row at index path, okay? And I'll hit return. And uh, this method takes, um, or it sends you a reference to the table view. And then it also sends you a reference to the that is an index path to the row that you tapped on. So when you touch a row or select a row, then it'll tell you which row you selected and which table view it was, okay? So what we're gonna do here is this. We're going to, um, first of all, we're gonna just deselect the row because, you know, as it is when I test my app, You'll see when I test the app here, when I tap on a row, it stays selected, right? So we don't want that. I just want it to highlight and then unhighlight. So it'll just flash with this color and then go back to the original color, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to deselect the row. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk to table view. So we'll say table view dot deselect row at index path, okay? 
So the deselect row at index path is you know a message that we send to the table view, and then we tell it which index path you know um, that we want to deselect. Which you know we've got the index path here of the one that you just selected, right? So we'll choose that, and then we have the option here of you know animated, which is a boolean. So we'll say um, we'll say you know true. Yeah, let's animate that effect. Okay, so we'll say table view deselect row at index path animated is true. And we'll test that out. And now when I tap on a row, you can see that, you know, the row highlights and but then fades out. Okay, so that's kind of a nice effect. And then we'll add the check mark. Okay, so uh, to add the check mark, we'll need to know um, what the state of the completed property is for the current to do item. So I'm going to say, you know, let to do equals uh, array, and then I'll use the index path dot row to get at the 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 item in the array that matches this row in our table view, right? And that'll give us the to do item, and then we're going to use an if statement. So I'll start with if to do dot completed. Right, and we can just do this because this will mean true. So if completed is true, then we're going to do one thing. Else, we're going to do something else. Okay, and we actually, you know, when we tap on a to-do item, we want to change the completed property. So if the completed property was true, we want to make it false, and if it was false, we want to make it true. So maybe right before the if statement here, we'll type in to do dot completed equals exclamation point that means not to do dot completed and we can do that here because um, completed is a boolean here we'll check it with the option key here and it shows us yes completed is a bool right so a bool like the the exclamation point <coughs> is the logical not operator I mean it's a, it means the opposite right so if we put that in front of this element, which is com which is a true or false, like it's a boolean, right? If it's true, then the exclamation point makes it false, okay? And if it was false, it makes it true, okay? So uh, so there we go. So now, if the completed item is is true, we'll show the accessory, and if the completed item is false, we'll hide it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say um, uh, we'll need to get the cell also. So why don't we do that here? Let me add another, um, I'll put another row here. We'll say let um, cell equal table view dot um, uh, what is it? No, it's cell for row at index path. Okay, so we'll choose, I'll just start typing table view dot cell and then it'll code complete for me for row at index path. Okay. And so what we'll do is we'll su supply an index path, which we have already for this method, right? And then we've got the cell. So now in our if statement, we'll say cell dot um, accessory type equals. And here I want to show the check mark if this is true. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in UI table view cell accessory type I know that's really long um, UI table view cell accessory type dot and then there's a few choices here we can choose detail button you know dis detail disclosure button disclosure indicator and then there's check mark at the top and that's the one we want so I'll choose you know cell dot accessory type equals UI table view cell accessory type dot check mark okay and then down here we'll do it again we'll say cell accessory type equals UI table view accessory type dot uh, none okay and that means that uh, there's no accessory okay so well uh, let's give it a test okay so uh, so here we are and uh, you know I'll tap on this guy oh there's my cell and there's my other cell, right? Um, and then there I can remove the check mark, right?
So I see the cell animation, the background color is correct, and then the check mark shows up. Maybe I want the check mark to uh, to match the tint color up here. So we'd set the uh, the tint color of the cell. But I'll, I'll leave that for you to try. Maybe I'll put that in another video. But uh, you can try that. Just set the tint color of the cell. You can do that in the with the appearance proxy too. Okay. Thanks for watching.